Hey everyone, we're going to look at section 4.7, number eight, and achieve. Um, it's an interesting problem. I just wanted you to note that there's um, some similar examples to this problem in our e textbook. I've got it open up here. Um, example two in section 4.7 and example three, which is just a modification. Um, very similar to the problem I'm going to do. A uh, really important problem and really a cool thing that calculus can do. And it's essentially if you are um, essentially traveling, if you will, be um, uh, in two segments where you're traveling through a different medium. Um, you can maybe move faster through one meeting medium than you can the other. And this could be, a, you know, traveling and individual traveling. Uh, I think in the example we're going to do, we've got a dog that's either running along the shore or going through water. So obviously he can move faster on the ground than he could in, can in the water. This example here in um, the textbook is minimizing travel time on a highway versus um, you know, sort of a, a shorter, a, a dirt road or whatever, I'm not sure if it's a dirt road, but a, a road where you have a slower speed you can go on. And um, you know the idea is which route you should take to minimize the time. Um, there's other similar examples in um, uh, all sorts of areas. I'm thinking of one where we have birds taking a flight and what happens is um, they are able to fly with less energy expenditure over, say, bodies of water where there's sort of an updraft from the current. And so they're able to coast a little bit easier. And, um, you know, so if a bird is migrating from point A to point B, what um, is the, the uh, you know, path they should take to minimize, in this case, energy expenditure, you know, how much energy they expend. And, and you can do the calculus on, on problems like this and say, okay, this is the predicted path the bird should take to minimize the energy expenditure. And, you know, I've seen studies which are quite amazing that after they do this, they look at the actual bird's um, path and, and the birds are able to fly uh, actually in that path. That's the way they go. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you the birds somehow are innately able to do calculus. Okay. Um, we're going to look at a dog. I think his name is Elvis, who is able to also uh, apparently know the best point to jump into the water uh, in order to retrieve, um, I forget what the, the the guy has thrown out into the water, maybe a Frisbee or whatever. Um, so my picture is a little bit simplified. Here's the shoreline, the water's out here, the dog here is at point A, and something is thrown out to point B. So he needs to get something at point B. So how can he do that? He can jump right into the water, this red dash line, and go straight for it. Okay, that would be the shortest distance, right? So you think quickest quickest time uh, is to just take straight line distance, right? Shortest distance. Problem is the dog runs at 6.2 meters per second, but he swims at only 0.96 meters per second, less than one meter per second. So uh, six times faster on the beach as opposed to the water. So you think, oh, well, if that's the case, let's have him run all the way from point A to point C, which is perpendicular directly from point B to the shore, the shortest distance from point B to the shore, which is actually 10 meters in this case, he'd have to run the 15 meters, but then he can jump and swim the shortest segment in the water. So you think maybe that's going to um, shorten the time because he can run so fast down to this point and then, you know, shorter distance going slower, okay? Or, you know, what could happen is he comes to some point D between A and C, then jumps in the water and swims out to the point. So, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, in the problem, let X be the, the distance from the point C to the point D. And the question is, what value of X will minimize the time for the dog to get from this point to this point? Again, if he just jumps right in the water and swims right to point B, the value of X would actually be what? All the way over here, point D would coincide with point A, and X would be the 15 meters. Uh, if the dog goes all the way to point C, and then jumps in and goes to point B, then the value of X would be zero. So the question is, should X be 15? Should X be zero or should X be something in between? Okay, so we're gonna set this up. The green information is given. Uh, what you need to deduce is since X is the distance from D to C, the distance from A to D is 15 minus X meters because it's 15 meters total. Then there's 15 minus X left after you take X away. And then if he goes to point D and then swims out this to point B, what's this length? I'm going to call that L. Well, we see this right triangle. So by Pythagorean theorem, we have L squared is X squared plus 10 squared. 
or L squared is, sorry, L is the square root of X squared plus 100 or X squared plus 100 to a half. Okay, so we've got these distances that the dog is going to travel, and we know the rate, the speed, or the rates that he travels. And so remember, distance is rate times time. So the time is going to be the distance divided by the rate. So what's the time for the dog, first of all, to run along the shore from point A to point D? Okay, we'll call that T sub 1. Well, it's the distance, which is uh, what, 15 minus X meters? divided by the rate and on again on land he, he runs 6.2 meters per second okay so this is it now I'm going to take the derivative uh, of this here in a little bit because we're going to find the, the the derivative to minimize the the time and so I just want to um, rewrite this a little bit dividing by 6.2 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 6.2 and if I distribute that through I get this and then x divided by 6.2 is the same as 1 over 6.2 times x. So really, this is just a linear function here. Think about it, constant minus a something times x. You know, um, So that's a fairly easy function to find the derivative of. More complicated is this one, the time to swim, let's swim to uh, the point B from point D. That's distance of L. And then he travels in the water 0.96 meters per second. And remember, we found L to be the square root of uh, x squared plus 100. And so there we have it. Dividing by 0.96, again, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal 1 over 0.96. I like that form better. So now, what's the total time for the dog to get out to the, to the object? Well, it's going to be the sum of the two times, the time it takes to get to the point D, and then the time to swim out. So the time to run along the shore plus the time to swim out. So the time to run along the shore, I just copy this information here, plus T2, I just copy that information here. And as we said, the value of X now, this function is valid for what? X from zero to 15, All right? Again, when X is zero, that means he's just coming uh, and directly into the water going out there. If X is 15, it goes all the way along the shore to point C and then goes to point B, or X can be anything in between. And we're going to find out what value of x will minimize this time. So it's a really cool problem, uh, a little bit complicated, but not too terribly complicated in terms of the, the math. And so how do we proceed? Now we just want to find the maximum, uh, sorry, minimum for this function on this closed interval. So this goes back to section 4.2. When we were finding a extreme value on a closed interval for a continuous function, what do we do? We find the critical point or points, and then we check the value of the function at those critical points and at the end points. And so then we'll get the max and min from those possibilities. Okay, so let's take the derivative. That's a constant, 15 divided by 6.2, derivative is zero. This is negative this times x is just negative point, uh, one divided by 6.2 rather. Okay, here a little more complicated, we got a chain rule, we got uh, 1 over 0.96 is a constant multiple. So I've got u to the 1 half. I bring the 1 half down. Here's the 1 half down times u, which is x squared plus 100 to the negative 1 half, but then times the derivative of the inner function. What's the derivative of x squared plus 100? It's 2x. So there's the derivative there. Cleaning this up, you see the 2 down here and this 2 will cancel. I bring the x up top. This to the negative 1 half comes down. So to the positive one half or square root and the 0.96 is down there. So there's my derivative. There's the calculus part, okay? Now, the, the, this is one page basically. Now, when I go to find the critical point, I've got almost a whole nother page because now you've got some algebra to do because we've got to solve when is the derivative equal to zero? Well, that's gonna be when this thing, of course, is equal to zero. And we have to solve this equation, which is a, uh, a root equation. In other words, I got to get rid of that square root somehow. So let's let's see what we do. First of all, let's add the one divided by six point two to both sides. And now now I just have two um, fractions equal to each other. I can just solve this. Remember by cross multiplying six point two times x, and then this times one gives me that. So these two quantities have to be the same. Right, And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides to get rid of that square root because I've got the radical basically isolated. You could divide by 0.96, but when I square this side, I'm just going to make sure I square the 0.96, which if you use your calculator is exactly 0.9216 if you square it. And then you square the square root of x squared plus 100, you just get x squared plus 100. And this squared is 6.2 squared times x squared. 
distributing this 0.9216 through gives me this. And now I just subtract the 0.9216x squared from both sides, combining like terms, I get 37.5184x squared equaling 92.16. I divide by this uh, quantity here, right? Solve for x squared. And then how do I solve for x? I take the square root. And using my calculator, it comes out to be a 1.57 about. Make sure you don't round until the end, right? Keep that in mind. These values right here, the 38. Point 4.4 and the 0.9216 are not rounded. They're exactly 0.96 squared and 6.2 squared. So don't round anything off until the very end. Okay. So remember, now we want to go back to the original function. And the original function was this one here. And we want to check it at this critical point we have and our uh, endpoints. Okay. So uh, I just used my calculator. I actually entered in this um, big expression into the uh, equation editor right here. Uh, you know, did all that as one function. So you got to be real careful about that to get that in there correctly. This this part right here. OK, and then I went to the table and I plugged in 0, 15 and the you know approximate 1.57 and I got those values there and they're summarized. Um, here. So these are approximation, which is all we need in this case. We don't need the exact value. And so one of these values is guaranteed to be the minimum. One's guaranteed to be the maximum. We're looking for the minimum and it occurs at that critical point, 12.71. So just a little bit shorter um, in terms of seconds, right? <laughs> for, for us, pretty negligible, you know, a little bit more than a tenth of a second quicker than if he just, what, zero just jumps right in. Remember, x equals zero is where he just jumps right in. OK, so the value of X is 1.57. So he's going to come all the way down here till X is 1.57 and then jump in. So uh, to minimize his time, then the dog will enter the water at a distance of 1.57 meters from point C. That's what they want and achieve. Um, or you can think about it, he traveled what? 15 minus 1.57 is 13.43. Is he traveled 13.43 meters along the shore, then jumps in and swims the rest of the way to, to the object. So. It's just amazing how um, uh, things that uh, you would think are incapable of doing calculus can uh, <laughs> can do it automatically without thinking, I guess. And that's something that's always amazed me about, um, uh, about all of creation. At any rate, um, hope this problem makes sense. It's, it's quite long. You might look at that example two and three in section 4.7 in the textbook. Um, really interesting problem, but really, you know, shows you the power of what calculus can do. Okay, I hope this helps a, a lot with this one. It's a very interesting problem, very many steps in a way, and, and quite a bit of algebra to get to, but I think rewarding when we get done with it. Okay, thanks.